Uh, we are happy to meet on the World e-learning platform. Uh, today, we are taking a lesson in social studies, social studies SHS 3. Uh, the topic for today is the role of the individual in community development. The role of the individual in community development. And so today, by the end of the, our lesson, every one of you should be able to explain the term community. And then uh, you should also be able to explain what is meant by community development. Mm -hmm. And then we expect you to state at least five factors to consider uh, in decision making process. We also expect you to state five ways the individual can contribute to the development of their community. Right. Now, let's begin with a definition. What is community? What is community? What is community? Now, community can be defined as relatively large group of people living in a defined locality. And the group has common values, common interests, enduring ties, frequent interactions, and a sense of closeness to one another. I take it again. Community is defined as a relatively large group of people living in a defined area. The group has enduring ties, common interests, common values, frequent face-to-face -face interaction, and then also a sense of closeness. So for every community, there are characteristics. And these are some of the characteristics that we have exhibited. For that group of people to be a community, they should have some common values. They should have common interests. There should be a frequent interactions. And then there should be an enduring types. And then there should be a sense of closeness. So taking them one after the other, for a group of people to live in a particular area, there should be something that binds all of them together. That is what we call the common values. There should be common interests. There should be enduring ties. And then face-to-face -face interaction and a sense of closeness to one another. Good. Now, let's look at community development. I just want us to consider what is meant by community development. Community development. By community development, we are referring to the positive change in the values or attitudes and the physical structures in an area, uh, which in the end contribute to raising the quality of life of the people of that area. So by community development, we are talking about improvements, improvements that take place in the community with regards to their social lives, with regards to their physical infrastructure, and also their economic activities. That is what we mean by community development. I hope you get it. Good. Now we can make some further progress. Okay. So we need to know these two definitions. They are key. When it comes to social studies, definitions are important. You may be required to define one way, one term, or the other. So now that we know the definitions for community and community development, I want us to zoom to the next subtopic. Now, let's consider uh, some various ways as an individual you can contribute to the development of your community. What are the rules the individual can play regarding the development of their community? So, as an individual, much as we expect our leaders to be responsible, as an individual, there are certain roles that you must also play in your community. And so, let's consider some of them. I think at this, at this juncture, even if you are asked, you can mention some few of them. Okay, now let's go together. Now, the first one, as a member of your community, you are required to exhibit positive attitude to work, positive attitude to work, 
positive attitude to work is one of your responsibilities as you are in your community. In order to contribute to the advancement or to the development of your community, your attitude should be a positive one. Positive attitude to work. Now, when we say positive attitude to work, I think you can give examples of positive attitude to work that we are talking about. Being punctual to work, being hard working, being dedicated to work, and being committed to whatever you are assigned to do, not being late and all that. So as an individual, one of your major contributions that you can do to see to the advancement of your community is to exhibit positive attitude to work. Good. Now let's consider the, the rest. As an individual, you are also required to fulfill your tax obligations. I mean, this one is so important that it's been captured in the 1992 Constitution of Ghana. Now, when you consider Article 41, uh, Clause 10, it talks about payment of taxes. Okay, so payment of tax and levies. So as an individual, it is your responsibility to pay taxes or levies to support the development of your communities. That is point number two. Now let's consider the rest. As an individual, one of the ways that you can also contribute to the development of your community is by respecting the rules and regulations of your community in which you live. Respecting the rules and the regulations of the community in which you live. So as an individual, as a citizen, you must be law abiding. Our society is a law governing one. And so it is expected of every individual in the society to be law abiding. In other words, respecting and abiding by the rules and the regulations in the constitution. Good. Now, furthermore, uh, one of the contributions individual can contribute to can offer to the development of your community is involvement in communal labor. Involvement in communal labor. So when about there is any communal labor, any communal activities, as a good citizen, you must get involved. Communal labor either to the set chop gutters or undertake any developmental projects in your community. As a citizen, you are required to show involvement, support your community to undertake any social venture being undertaken. Good. Another contribution the individual can offer to ensure the development of your community is to contribute funds, equipment, or other incentives when they need be. So as an individual, you are required to contribute funds, equipment, and other incentives to the community when the need arises. What do you have to offer? We have said earlier on, beside payment of taxes and levies, you can also, for example, there is a development fund. It is your responsibility to contribute to the fund so that whatever projects that they want to undertake can be realized. Good. So your contribution of funds and equipment and incentives to support your community. Now, let's move on. Another contribution the individual can offer to ensure the development of your community is to ensure good social relationship. You have to ensure good social relationship. You should live in harmony with one another. You know, Ghana is inhabited by so many tri tribes and ethnic groups. And therefore, you should be able to coexist with one another. So, one of the key things that an individual is supposed to exhibit in your community is to ensure there is good neighborliness, or what we call good social relationship. Good. To move on, it is expected of every individual member of the community to also maintain and keep 
what their environments. But this one has also been captured in the national constitution. The, when you consider the 1992 constitution of Ghana, uh, same chapter, uh, Article 49, Clause 11, says so. It is your responsibility to making sure that you protect your environment, keeping it safe and clean. So as one of your responsibilities, you must maintain and keep your environment or your surroundings clean. That is a responsibility. Another one, you are required to also contribute cash and kind and other donations when the need arises. As an individual, it is your responsibility to contribute cash and kind and other donations when the need arises. Now, let's move on. One key role that a member of a society can also play to making sure your community develops is to offer yourself for leadership positions. Now, you can offer yourself for leadership positions. Now, so long as you have the minimum requirements, so long as you have the qualification, when there is any vacant leadership position in your community, you are required to offer yourself to play that key role so that you can see to the development of your community. So now you are a member of your community, but if you have all that it takes to be a leader, why don't you offer yourself? Now you can vie for uh, to be a, an MP of your area or an assemblyman or any other political appointment if you so qualify. So as a, a member of the community, it is one of your responsibility to offer yourself for leadership positions when the need arises. Good. Now, I hope you can go over uh, whenever you are asked to talk about your contributions as an individual to your community, you are able to give not less than five. Good. All right, let's go on. You realize that these are the contributions of the individual. Now, every community has leaders. As much as we have leaders, we also have followers. Now, the followers are the individual citizens of the community. In other words, the individual members of the community. Now, much as the individual members of the community are required to contribute their quota to see to the development of their community, the leaders are also required to play certain key rules. So we just want to consider the next item. Now, the next item we want to talk about is factors to consider when there is any decision-making process. Factors to consider for community development decision-making process. Factors to consider for community development decision making process. Now, in every community, there is a decision making body. And I hope you can give examples of those decision making bodies in our community. To give you examples, we have unit community. Unit committee is a decision making body. Apart from unit committee, we have district assembly as a decision making body. And even at the national level, we have parliament as decision-making body. We still have even the cabinet as decision-making body. Right. Now, as a decision-making body in our communities, there are certain key factors that we need to consider if you want to take any decisions. Because decisions are not taken in isolation. And therefore, there are certain key things that we need to consider before you make any major decision. So let's consider some of them. Now, students are supposed to be very careful. In exams, if you are asked to present them in an orderly way, then they should start from the first one to the last one. So you make sure you are very careful. 
whenever you're giving a new examination question, read between the lines. If it's indicated that you are required to give a factor to consider in decision-making process in an orderly way, then you make sure it starts from the first one to the last one. But then, if it's only indicated, then you can give in any order. Right. Okay, so now, what are the factors to consider as a decision-making body in taking any major decision? Okay, now let's move on. The first one is identification of the needs of the community. Identification of the needs of the community. So as a decision-making body, just as I said, that this assembly or the unit committee or whichever decision-making body, you need to identify the needs of the community. Assemble, you have to identify the needs of the community. Pressing needs which are confronting the community, you need to identify them first. Now, the problems can be maybe uh, lack of this or lack of that. So, what are the needs, what are the pressing needs of your community? You should be able to identify all of them. Is it school building or hospitals or any social infrastructure or whatever? So, what are you lacking? What are the pressing needs of the community? So, as a factor, you need to identify the needs, the various needs of the community. That is the first key thing to consider. Now, having identified the needs of the community, what do you have to do next before a decision can be made? The next key thing is to sensitize the people on the needs of the community collectively. Now, sensitizing the people on the needs of the community collectively. Now, as a decision-making body, having identified the needs, because you're not going to operate in a vacuum, you need some people to support you, and therefore you need to conscientize. You need to draw the members of the society and the other key holders their attention to the pressing needs that the community has. So the number two thing, key thing to do is to sensitize the people on the needs of the community collectively, so that you can get your support when the need arises. Now, having sensitized them, what do you have to do? The next thing to do is to prioritize. Prioritization of the needs of the community. What do you mean by prioritization? You are arranging them in their order of importance. There are so many things to talk about. There are so many issues to tackle. But with your limited resources, you cannot undertake all of them at the same time. And therefore, you need to arrange them in a scale of preference. So that you tackle the most pressing ones before you come to the others. So one of the key factors to consider is to prioritize or put your problems or challenges in order of preference. And like we said from the beginning, you arrange them in order of magnitude. The most pressing ones first before the others. Let's move on. Now, the next thing to consider is to study alternative solutions. You study alternative solutions. All right. Now, there are various ways available to solve a particular problem. And so you wait the various options available to you. For example, you want to undertake a building project for say hospital, you want to put up a hospital for the community. Now, how are you going to go about it? Are you going to solicit funds from philanthropists or you are going to appeal to the central government or you are going to levy one another? So you need to vary the various options available to you. That's why we refer to as studying alternative solutions. So the fourth key point to consider is to assess the various ways available to you as a community. Right. Now let's move on. Now, 
The next thing to consider is to also mobilize the community support. Now, since we are not going to operate in a vacuum as a decision-making body, we need to also mobilize the total support of the community members so that you can see to the successful implementation of whichever project that you want to undertake. So there is a need for you to mobilize the community support. In other words, the support of the community for whom you are going to undertake such a project. And that is key thing to remember. Don't forget. Okay, let's move on. Now, having secured the support of the community members and all the other key stakeholders, what do you have to do? Then it comes to funding. One key thing to consider is funding. Where are you going to get the resources from? The funding. So you have to mobilize funds and other resources in order to execute the projects as at hand. Examples, are you going to take silver collection or are you going to levy one another or are you going to create a fund that people are going to donate onto? So you need to mobilize funds or funding for the particular projects that they want to undertake. Good. Then another key thing to consider is to develop strategies for the implementation of the final decision. Now you have your materials, everything, how are you going to implement the final decision? So the next key thing to do is to ensure that you have developed good strategies for the implementation of the decisions. Good. Now let's move on. Now, one key other thing that we must also consider is to ensure that you have a broad participation of community members. Now, it is important that those for whom you are going to undertake such a project need to be part and parcel of the project right from the beginning to its implementation. So there should be a broader participation of community members. Even you can organize communal labor or maybe you can appeal to churches to come and support. So there should be a broad participation of community members to making sure that they own the project that they are going to undertake. So that's one key thing to remember. You have to ensure that there is broad participation of community members. Good. Now, another key thing to also consider is to anticipate a likely avenue for opposition. No, don't forget, no matter how viable that project may be, you may get opposition from any side. And therefore, you put it at the back of your mind that you anticipate a likely avenue for people to oppose, no matter how viable or important you think the project might be. So you create a room for a likely opposition to arise. Okay, let's move on. Now, the last key thing to you can consider before any major decision is made is to also consider the way power and the commitment to implement decisions. So that it's not going to be one off. It should not be business as usual. So what is the way power? Are you committed? Are you so sure that this time around, having gone through all the processes, you are, are you able to commit? Are you able to implement decisions? And so there should be way power or commitment at all levels. You need to get all the stakeholders and the people committed to whatever is being considered on the table. All right. Okay. So uh, in summary, we began by looking at uh, definitions for community, which is key in social studies. You are normally required to define some key terms. And so here, don't forget to uh, know how to define community, as we defined earlier on. So it's a relatively large group of people in a defined location. And as characteristics, they have common values, they have enduring ties, 
they have face to face interaction, they have a sense of closeness and all. So don't forget that. And then we came to uh, community development. So for community development, we are talking about uh, positive change in values, attitudes and physical infrastructure of an area that contributes in the end to the raising of the living standards of the people. In other words, by community development, we mean the improvement in the social living of the community with regards to the economic activities and then the physical infrastructure of the area. And then we also considered the rules the individual can play to see to the development of their communities. So we have various rules the individual can play to making sure their community is developed. And then finally, we considered factors uh, in decision-making process. So as decision-making bodies, such as the unit committee or the district assembly or whichever decision-making body, factors to consider before you arrive at the final decision. Then we had identification of needs of the community. Then we came to sensitizing the people on the needs of the community so that they can you can get their involvement collectively. Then we came to prioritizing the needs of the community. There are so many pressing needs in the community, but which ones are most important? Which ones might be tackled first? So you prioritize them by arranging them in a scale of preference, right? And then we also got to know that we have to study alternative solutions because there may be so many ways of you know uh, getting problems solved. So you need to vary the various ways available to you to get things done. And then the fifth one, you should be able to also mobilize the support of the community because the project, whatever project being undertaken is meant for them. So in order to get their total support, you need to take them serious. Then the next key thing that we talked about was to mobilize funding. Where are you going to get your funding from? Are you going to levy one another or are you going to appeal to philanthropists or are you going to appeal to the government or central government or whatever. And then also the next key thing that we talked about was developing strategies to implement whatever decisions that we have made. And you shouldn't also forget that there should be a broader consultation before final decisions are arrived at. And then we also said that we must also anticipate a likely opposition from any side. So they should be at the back of your mind that no matter how important or viable that project might be, you may get uh, opposition from any side. It can be political, it can be social, it can be any other front. And then lastly, uh, we talk about the will power or the commitment of the people. What is new? What is different? Is it not going to be business as usual? <laughs> so there should be a high commitment level to making sure that whatever decision you arrive at, will be implemented as planned. Good. So students, now let's take some assignments. We have two questions for you. Uh, question number one, you explain the term community performance. You explain the term community performance, and then the B part, uh, you need to suggest four ways in which the individual can contribute to the development of their community. For 16 marks, that is one full question. And then question number two, you need to discuss five factors that can be considered in the community development decision making process for 20 months. Students, that is all we have for today. We will meet another time. Thank you. Thank you.